So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I'm Franklin, the Product App Specialist for Kit, and your webinar host. It's been a long couple of days now, so what better way to take a break here with us as we show you the tips and tricks in kits that you need to becoming that supercharged power user. Let me also introduce you to Julia, who will be moderating today's webinar. Julia? Thanks, Franklin. Hi again, my name is Julia. I will be your webinar moderator for today. So that means if you have any questions for us throughout the webinar, um, please feel free to submit them in the chat box, just located on the GoToWebinar control panel. So I'll be monitoring all our incoming questions, and then we'll take a few minutes at the end of the webinar to answer them. All right, so today I'll be demonstrating how to use the behavior and project features and also adding those freeform items. Julia, what do we have on the agenda? Okay, so for today's webinar agenda, we're going to be going over uh, the behavior in project features uh, like quantity combine, uh, model visibility, and also include in project quick sheet. Then we're going to be going over some various ways of using those freeform items like creating an item, creating a special, and then also adding some additional line charges to your project. So as always, let's begin with the opportunity. Uh, we'll be continuing off of last week's webinar project, however, there have been a few changes to the project's scope, so they've sent us the, last, the latest addendum. Franklin, our designer, will need to add some of the following features. Um, he'll have to add two more seats to the touchdown area and respecify the seats in a different color. Also, an additional standalone mobile pedestal, um, a nice area rug for the casual meeting area, uh, so changing some seat fabrics of chairs to calm, uh, include installation cost, and lastly, adding some terms to the project. So with all those um, extra requirements, Franklin's going to now continue with the session. All right, thanks a lot. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my kits, and we're going to go into the project last where we started. Okay, there we go. So here's the project that we created uh, the last couple of webinars. It's the nice uh, touchdown area with the, uh, uh, with the uh, casual meeting space as well. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, add two more of these uh, touchdown seats here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to re-specify them in different colors. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and ungroup this. And then I'm going to make sure I select one of the uh, uh, stools here. And I'm going to create a duplicate. So I now have the duplicate. And we all know that I can easily double tap on the, uh, on the seat, tap on the uh, selection finish, and I can choose one of the finishes here uh, that I need to include. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go pick lime green. And then we're going to go ahead and tap on done. And as you can see here, because of the behavior of, uh, of the items, whenever we change one swatch, it changes all the swatches for any like item. All you need to do is go ahead and double tap on the chair again. And this time, if you look at the very bottom, you see behavior and project. What we need to do is we need to change this chair's behavior. So first thing I want to do is tap on undo. We're going to bring it back to the original color. We're going to double tap on this chair again. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and tap in behavior and project. And you can now see uh, the three options we have here. So the first one is quantity combine, where by default, it actually says combine all like this into one line. So that changes to any will be applied to all. That's the reason why when we actually uh, made that swatch change, it made a change to all four chairs. So what we need to do is we need to keep this one separate by tapping on that radio button. Now we can go ahead and tap on the options finishes. And now we can actually specify that finish. Once I'm complete, I tap on done. And as you can see here, we've now created this uh, uh, see it as a singular line item. So if I go to list view and I go into seating, you can now see that uh, I have two separate lines for the same exact chair. Okay, so we need to add one more of these. So what I need to do now is if I were to create a duplicate, that will actually create another line because right now the behavior of this particular seat is standalone. So what I need to do is I need to go back into the chair's behavior. I need to change it back to combine all like this into one line. And now when I create the duplicate and go to list view, you can now see it added that duplicate under the same line so I'm not carrying uh, or creating another instance. Okay, So that's changing um, the uh, combine uh, feature of the actual uh, chair there or the seat. So I'm going to quickly 
place this in scene where they need to go. All right, great. So that's now done. So what we also need to do is the clients were asking uh, for a mobile uh, metal pedestal um, that needs to be included, uh, not for this particular area. It still needs to be included for pricing. So what we need to do is we need to add uh, a pedestal uh, to this uh, current price uh, project here. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on Add Item. And since I know what the actual uh, uh, model number is, I'm going to go ahead and ta uh, tap that in. And that's PSMP. 6, 1, 2, and now we're going to search. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to go ahead and double tap on that. And we're going to go ahead and finish the uh, spec. All right. And remember, we're also going to configure price so it uh, matches uh, the pricing of the actual current project. Here we're going to add a 15% charge. And then a nice 45% discount. Okay, so if you don't know how to do this, actually, if you go to uh, our uh, knowledge base, you can actually see the last webinar, or you can contact Julia, and she can also share a link uh, for you to view uh, the uh, multiple um, bulk pricing uh, and price changes and uh, advanced uh, search uh, webinar we did last week. Okay, right, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on apply. And now that this is complete, I'm just going to add it anywhere in the seat. So obviously, we don't want this to affect our graphic. We can move it out of space so that when we render, it's not uh, in the actual rendering. Or if we leave it in the actual rendering or leave it in the, uh, on the floor grid with the, uh, the other items, what we can also do is change its behavior. So we can go ahead and double tap on that item. If we go into the behavior project, the next option is visibility. And here, what we can do is we can actually hide the graphic by tapping on hide. It will now disappear from the scene. But if I go to list view, and if I go into the actual uh, catalog it belongs to in list view, you can see that it is now included as a line. The pricing is here. But we have this little eyeball graphic indicating that this graphic is currently turned off so you don't see it but we do have the actual pricing that's now included in the total project price. Okay, So that's how you can actually include items um, that, that may not necessarily have to uh, uh, be seen in the graphic, uh, but do need to be included in the uh, price of the actual project. All right. Now, just in case you need to make sure that uh, is, uh, is visible again, all you need to do is double tap anywhere in the actual line box to uh, bring up the actual edit menu, go back into the behavior project, and all you need to do is now change the visibility back to show in 3D scene. Right? So right now we're going to keep that off. All right, great. So the next uh, uh, change we got to make is we also need to include an area rug uh, for the casual meeting area. Now, this manufacturer uh, may not actually have, or, or the dealer or the sales rep may not have the option to selecting a rug. This may be something uh, additional uh, to the actual project. So we, we, even though we don't have a graphic, what we can do is we can actually utilize one of the graphics uh, that are part of the KOE catalog. So I'm going to go into Architectural Elements. I'm going to bring up Flooring. And I'm going to bring up Rug 9 by 12. Okay. I'm going to simply add it to the scene. We're not going to add any changes yet uh, to it. So we can place it there. But what I can do is I can create this as a, a freeform item. Okay? And all I need to do is tap on Add Item. And at the very top left, you see the option to adding a freeform. All right? So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and tap on Add Freeform. And then I get to uh, recreate an actual model number. And since we don't really have one, uh, what I'm actually using is the rug 9 by 12 here that I've actually referenced from the KOE catalog as my example. So here I'm going to go ahead and tap in rug 9 by 12. And I'm just going to add SPC beside it as a special order. 
So I know that this item is a special order. And here I can add any kind of description. Uh, what I'm going to uh, type in here is special order rug. Okay. Obviously, you want to fill this up with whatever, whatever information you need. But as soon as that's done, what I can do is I can also go ahead and add pricing. We're going to say that's $900. Once that's added, I'm going to go ahead and take this graphic, just like I do with any uh, model, drag it into the scene and let go. Here you can see uh, item added, see list view. So let's go take a look at the list view. First, we need to see all catalogs, or we can actually quickly uh, yeah, tap on all catalogs, actually. And what I need to do is now find that rug. So here it is, rug 9 by 12. And just below it, we have the rug 9 by 12 special order, indicating the price as the item above uh, doesn't have any pricing. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this pricing, uh, 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 in case there's any kind of price uh, tag added to this uh, carpet, we can actually quickly specify it first by double tapping it. You can choose any color here. I'm just going to pick a nice neutral tone. And uh, one thing that we can do is we can double tap on the item again. There we go. Go into the behavior and project. And then we can also uh, go through the last option here, include in project quick sheet as do not include in Project QuickSheet. And what that does is it raises the actual value for that, uh, for that particular item. Okay. So now what we're doing is we're actually mirroring uh, a current graphic that we have existing in kits with a free form note that we've just created. All right. So there it is. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into 3D view. All right. So the other thing that we need to do is we also need to change the Azure Fabric uh, uh, seats here for this particular item to COM. Okay, so as you can see here, we have uh, uh, the options of all the actual finishes on here. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, uh, we just refer uh, we, we we create an add freeform node uh, to refer to the COM that's going to be applied to these uh, particular chairs. All right. So what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to go ahead and go back into Add Item, go back into Add Freeform, and again, what I'm going to do is copy the same um, the same uh, model number as uh, those particular items, and this time I'm going to add Com beside it. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put uh, seating to be specified by COM, OK? And what I also want to do is uh, I just want to include the additional charge of applying COM to this. Or what I can actually do is I can apply uh, what the total cost of the uh, purchase of the chair is with adding COM to it as uh, uh, a whole number. So here, let's just say that. Uh, uh, with uh, with adding COM to this particular chair, it's going to increase the price up to 12000 And since we need to uh, uh, create uh, three of them, or uh, we have applied to three, what we're going to do is we're going to put a total price change of 36000 Okay. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and, again, place my finger on the camera graphic, drag it into the scene. If we go to list view, and we find that model number. Here it is, May CSB. Underneath, we have the COM for it. But what we need to do is we also need to make sure that we adjust the actual pricing, because we now have the value up to 36000 And uh, again, what we're going to do is double tap in the actual line uh, box of the uh, chair here, go back into the behavior and project, and also do not include that in Project Quick Sheet, because we have the new value of the cost that falls below it. All right, so we've now added COM to those chairs. All right, so let's go on to uh, the next one, which is include installation cost. So here what we can do is we can simply use the add free form to adding any kind of additional line charge uh, to your uh, quick sheet. So all you need to do is tap on add item again, tap on free form, and this time what we want to do is we want to make sure 
that uh, the line chart appears at the bottom of uh, our, uh, our quick sheet. So I'm going to assign it a ZZ1 uh, note, and then I'm going to say installation. Now I'm going to go ahead and in the description area, I'm just going to say installation charge. And we're also going to give that a value. Once that's done, drag it back into the scene, let go. If we go to list view, scroll all the way to the bottom, there we have our ZZ1 installation charge. Okay, so it's pretty simple to use the add free form. I'm going to show you one more time. Here we're going to add our terms and conditions. Again, I want this to appear at the bottom uh, of the quick sheet. So again, I'm going to apply ZZ. This time I'm going to put two, period, and I'm just going to put terms. And then for terms, I'm just going to say net 30. Okay, so I can add that description, or if this is something that you use repeatedly for your projects, what you can do is you can create a note uh, using your iPad uh, Notes uh, uh, app, and you can actually leave it there, and all you need to do is copy and paste the value, just like uh, as I'm going to do here. So first I'm going to go and press the Home button. I'm going to go to my notes. Okay, and here I have a note called Payment Term. All right. So all I want to do is make sure I select uh, all my uh, notes here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to double tap my home button. Go back into kits. We're going to have to recreate that free form again. So here I'm going to add again zz2 dot terms. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste my note in there. And now I have my payment and terms that are now included. Okay, so once that's complete, I can go ahead and add that to my project. And if I go to my list view, we now have our payment terms at the bottom. And I'm pretty happy with what I have now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a nice rendering of what we have. And let's make sure that we maximize the frame of the iPad. There we go. Oh, maybe a little bit too much. And let's uh, go with the first uh, rendering option. So you can see how you can actually use the behavior and project features to help you edit your scene uh, to making it a little bit more custom uh, for your client. Uh, you know, especially uh, uh, you know it's, if it's based on the actual uh, project requirements. You can also see how you can use Freeform. Uh, to uh, create ad hoc items. This, these could be catalog items that no longer exist uh, you know, in, the cat in the current catalog of the manufacturer, but are still available in warehouses uh, from whichever dealerships or manufacturer. Um, you can actually use it to create uh, any kind of notation for the project, like uh, uh, here we added the line charges and the payment terms. And then you can also uh, use it to create any note for uh, uh, any kind of special uh, that needs to be created for, for a particular item uh, or a, any kind of com that needs to be applied to uh, any of the seating here if it's not available already uh, through the manufacturer's catalogs. All right, it's all a matter of making sure that the communication uh, to your client is clear so that they can understand exactly what they're seeing uh, based on the estimation that you've created. Again, just to understand what we're doing here is we're creating a graphic and we're creating the notations for it to really explain what we're doing. So if we understand this, even though if we're creating some kind of special, uh, let's say it's a change in the dimension of a particular work surface that needs to be cut down because of uh, the actual space requirements, then the notation that's created through Freeform will uh, explain all that. And uh, again, because it's a graphic that we're creating, we're not going to see what the dimensions are. So what you're just doing is you're making sure that you're showing them the, uh, you know, what the graphic looks like and that the notations will explain any kind of uh, uh, changes that the product is going to be uh, uh, taking. Okay, so that's uh, done there. We're going to go ahead and save that to our photo library. And then again, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create that uh, final quick sheet. This is the estimation that we're going to send out to the client. Here again, we're going to call it the KISP office. 
and then we're going to choose one of the fabulous renderings that we have. Obviously, I want to show them the rendering uh, that have the current changes. And even though we don't have the COM uh, uh, indicated on the particular chair, I left it as a gray, again, to keep it neutral. You can easily pick a color that's similar to uh, the COM fabric that's going to be used. But in this case, I just left it gray because I have the notation that, it, that is going to explain why uh, uh, or what the actual change is going to be. So I'm going to leave that graphic on there. I can add that custom cell line, which is going to be my shipping and handling. As always, I'm going to go ahead and include that. And also the value of the shipping and handling, which is 500. And as you can see here, we have the list of all the products that uh, we've now added as well as all the notations that were created. Here's that new pedestal. And again, all the way down to our payment terms. Okay, so once you're satisfied with that, you can choose how you want to create this estimation by showing them details of whatever you want. Here again, what I like to do is protect my bid. So I'm going to turn off uh, all those control switches, just giving them basically a line item list view of the actual project with no graphics, uh, not even indicating how the discounts or how the uh, uh, pricing was created so that, uh, again, I can protect my bid. And if I'm satisfied with that, what I can do is I can quickly send that to my uh, client uh, for them to review. All right, so great. So what I've done is I've completed all the project requirements, created the actual estimation so they can now review the project, and we're only waiting for uh, minutes for them to make a decision. All right, and that's it, everyone. We've now covered quite a bit, so keep practicing. And in no time, you too will become a supercharged power user at our next Collaborator of the Week.